Welcome back everyone, Patrick here and moving on to the next video, what we have to do is show that each of these three piecewise functions here are continuous for all x values for xer. And you may have seen me do similar questions in previous videos where at that certain meeting point I just make sure the y values are equal and then show it's continuous like that and your prof or teacher may allow you to get away with that. But some profs may require more explanation. They may want you to use the actual definition of continuity and show that these three conditions hold at these meeting points. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. So I know it's more of a headache than just showing the y values are equal. Trust me, it's more of a headache for me as well to put more detail in the video and explain it to you. But if that's what they require, then we just got to deal with it. So Starting off with uh, number one, we got uh, f of x equals uh, cos x plus one when x is less than or equal to pi over two, and then sin x when x is greater than pi over two. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show this piecewise function in three different spots. So when x is less than pi over two, when x is equal to pi over 2, notice that that's the meeting point between these two functions here, these two pieces, and then when x is greater than pi over 2. And then I'll also make a graph while we're doing the function. So let's start with x is less than pi over 2. So notice when x is here, when x is less than or equal to pi over 2, the function is cos x plus 1. We're just going to deal with when it's less than pi over 2, because when it's equal, I'm going to deal with it here. So notice that cos x plus 1 is continuous. If we just look at that function on its own, not part of this piecewise function, cos x plus 1 is continuous for all x e r. Notice that its domain is x e r. So if we were to graph cos x plus 1, it's basically the cos x graph shifted up by one unit. So if we graph the cos x graph, uh, let's say, you know what, let's put this a little lower. Let's say that this is one here. And then let's say this is negative one. So what's happening is it's just a wave that's going like that. And then this way is just going like that. So this is just the cos x graph. So cos x plus 1, basically what it is, is shifted up by one unit. So this y value of 1, it's now going to be a y value of 2. This y value of 0 is now going to be a y value of 1. This y value of negative 1 is now going to be a y value of 0. The 0 is going to end up being 1. And then this one is going to end up being 2. Here, 0, it's going to be 1. This negative one is going to become zero. This zero is going to become one. And then this one's going to become two. And so the function is going to look like this when it's shifted up. Okay, so that is cos x plus one. So let me erase cos x. And let's just leave uh, cos x plus one. And notice that the domain for that function in general is xcr. So if cos x plus 1 is continuous for all xcr, that means that therefore it is continuous for x being less than pi over 2. So notice that pi over 2 is over here. Right? So for all the x values less than pi over 2, notice that this piecewise function is going to be continuous because it's defined by this function cos x plus 1. And since cos x plus 1 is continuous everywhere, then this piecewise function is going to be continuous for x values less than pi over 2. So if we erase that, it basically uh, that piece looks like this for this piecewise function. Right, so we're done with this portion of the graph, this portion of the domain, when x is less than pi over 2. 
Now when x is greater than pi over 2, notice that this piecewise function is defined by sine x. And sine x is continuous for all x e r. So we would write the exact same thing. We would say sine x is continuous for all x e r, for all x values. Therefore, it is also continuous for x values greater than pi over 2. Because all the x values greater than pi over 2 are sort of encapsulated within xcr. So if it's continuous for all xcr, then it's also continuous for x values that are greater than pi over 2. And sine x, the way it looks, is it starts here. Remember, this is a y value of 1. Starts here at the origin, if we draw a dotted line, and it looks something like that, right? And it just keeps going on forever and ever to both positive infinity and negative infinity. But notice that for this piecewise function, it's only for x values greater than pi over 2. So we can actually forget about the, these portions that are less than pi over 2, and we would continue the graph like that. <clears throat> now, notice that at that x value of pi over 2, the y values of both of these functions are equal. They're both equal to 1. If we plug in sine of pi over 2, you would end up getting 1. Sine of 90 degrees is 1. And if you plugged in uh, pi over 2 here, cos of 90 or cos of pi over 2 plus 1 would give you that y value of 1 as well. And so, as I mentioned, some teachers may be okay with you just showing that, that those y values are equal. And so the function is continuous then for all the x values. We can see it with the graph. But I'm going to go into more detail, and I'm actually going to go through all three of, um, of those conditions at that x value of pi over 2. So the first thing we got to do in order to prove that the function is continuous at this meeting point is show that the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of this piecewise function exists. And to show that it exists, what we got to do is we got to approach pi over 2 from the negative side of the function, and then we got to approach pi over 2 from the positive side of the function. Now notice if we're approaching from the negative side, meaning from the left side, here's this uh, x value pi over 2, then what function are we dealing with? We're going to be dealing with this one, cos x plus 1, for the x values less than pi over 2. So this here, we can rewrite the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the negative side of that function cos x plus 1. Just for x values less than pi over 2 or to the left of it, to the negative side, the piecewise function is defined by the function cos x plus 1. While this one here, the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the positive side of the piecewise function is the same as the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the positive side of sine x, because that's the function to the right of pi over 2. And notice that this, we're approaching that y value of 1, and notice from this side, we're also approaching that y value of 1. And so since we're approaching that same y value from both sides, it means that this limit is equal to 1. So we showed that it exists. Not only does it exist, it's equal to 1. So that is the first condition there, right? And we did it with two one-sided limits. So this is how to show that in detail. All right, so first condition is done. Uh, second condition, what we got to show is that f of pi over 2 is defined. And notice that it is defined here for this function because it's x is less than or equal to pi over 2. So that means f of pi over 2 is going to be cos of pi over 2 plus 1. This is, uh, this is going to be 0 plus 1 would give us 1. Right? So wouldn't be proper to write sine of pi over 2 because sine x is for x values greater than pi over 2. 
while cos x plus 1 is for x values less than or equal to pi over 2. So the pi over 2 we would plug into this function. Right? So we show that f of pi over 2 for this piecewise function is defined and it's equal to 1. And now notice that since the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of f of x, right, what we did in condition 1 with those two one-sided limits is equal to f of pi over 2, which we did here in condition 2, and both of them equal and both of them are equal to 1, it means that f of x is continuous. at that x value of pi over 2 by the definition of continuity. All right, so I know it's a little bit more hectic to do it this way, but again, some profs, some teachers may require that detail. They may want you to go through these conditions here, and so I wanted to make a video where I show you how to go through the conditions at these meeting points versus just showing that the y values are equal at that meeting point like we may have done before, right? So that's the proper way to do it.